Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience and I'm here tonight with my full review of the Denifrips Pontus 2 deck. This is an R2R digital to analog converter. This was loaned to me by Vinshine Audio out of Singapore. This currently sells for $2,449 Singapore dollars or in US dollars it is $1,803.93 so if you go to their website um, and you look at their equipment be sure to realize that the prices are in Singapore dollars not US dollars if you're buying from the US because you the um, conversion is quite a bit cheaper or lower priced in US dollars. Anyway, because um, the reason I'm telling you this is there's been discussions about these uh, DACs on the headphone experience on Facebook and people have made comments about the prices and they were looking at the amount in Singapore dollars and not US dollars. In fact, the first time I looked at their website, I made that mistake. So. Anyway, this is a fully balanced dual mono R2R ladder deck and uh, this is an older technology than uh, most of the decks nowadays are using Delta Sigma DAC chips and um, the R2R ladder decks is an older technology but it's become very popular lately even though in most cases it's larger heavier and you know just takes up more room but anyway um, I had not reviewed a uh, R2R type deck until a couple months ago and I really do like them it's just um, it's kind of a different sound not a huge difference but similar to the difference between solid state going to tubes the same thing going from um, Delta Sigma type decks to the R2R decks. It's just a little bit warmer um, and I think a little bit more three-dimensional sound. But anyway, uh, this deck and um, I will try to give you a quick look at it here and then I'll hold it up a little later and try to show you a few more details. But this deck is very heavy. This thing weighs over 26 pounds. It's fairly big, it's about 13 inches square, but it's um, very heavy for its size, even though the entire casing or chassis is aluminum. So I'll try to give you a better look in a few minutes, but can't hold on to it with one hand. I cannot afford to drop this and buy it. Um, so anyway, uh, this is only the second R2R DAC that I've reviewed. The first would be the Audio GD. R8 Mark II, um, which is even bigger, about the same weight, but um, I enjoyed that DAC so much that um, I wanted a chance to review another R2R DAC, and I've heard just a huge amount of good things about the Denifrips DAC, so I was lucky enough to get a chance to review the Pontus II. Anyway, um, this DAC has seven digital inputs. Uh, that would include two coaxial inputs. Uh, one is an RCA plug and the other is a BNC. And um, you can, with a little adapter, you can use an RCA cable on the BC and, or BNC uh, connection. Has an optical input, two AES inputs, a USB input, and an I squared S input. And then it has two analog outputs, which would be your RCA single-ended and your XLR balanced output. Uh, accepts PCM signals all the way up to 1536 kilohertz and DSD up to 1020, uh, 1024. Uh, according to Denifrips, it has a signal to noise ratio of 120 decibels, a dynamic range of 121 decibels, and crosstalk at a crosstalk separation of at least 110 decibels between the two channels. The size of this unit is 12.5 inches wide, it's 13 inches deep, and it's four and a quarter inches tall. And the weight, according to Denifrips, is 12 kilograms, which works out to 26.4 pounds. Um, like I said earlier, the cases are 
Um, and I'm talking all the way around the entire unit. Front, back, sides, top, bottom are all aluminum, but it looks to be about a quarter inch thick. And um, so this is a very heavy unit. I'm going to try to give you a better look at it. Um, like I said, I can't hold it with one hand and point to things. So I'm just going to try to roll up here a little bit, give you a closer look. Starting from the left, you have your power button, then your um, that's between on and standby. Then you've got your input buttons. Above that, you've got your LED lights. Then I believe it's a phase button. I think next, I can't read it right now. I think is your um, oversampling, non-oversampling button, then your mute button, and then your mode button. And uh, you've got more LEDs above that. And I'll uh, switch over to a little clip, um, which will give you a view of the unit with it on and show you what the buttons do. This is the front panel of the Denifrips Pontus II DAC. I wanted to show you the uh, control buttons and what their functions are. To start with, at the far left here, you have your power on standby button. And with the power on, you can come over here to your input controls and you can th scroll through your seven different inputs. You start with your coaxial one, your coaxial two, your optical, your AES one, your AES two, your USB, and your I squared S. What's nice about this is that it has two buttons so you can go the other way without having to scroll all the way around. Then you've got your phase button, which inverts the phase, and that's not, there's neither a right or wrong. It's just your personal preference. Most of the time, I don't really hear a difference. Um, then you've got your oversampling, no oversampling button. If the light is on, you're in no oversampling. If it's off, you're in oversampling mode. Then your mute button not only um, mutes the sound, but it also puts you into a mode where you can change your filters, your digital roll-off filters, in your oversampling mode. And there are two filters, so what you do is you hit the mute button. And if you come over here, the uh, lights are scrolling. And um, if you hit the, uh, the mode button, if you hit the mode button, the optical light will come on. Well, you see it scrolls on and off. If it's on, that means you're in the uh, slow filter mode, and if it's on, you're in the sharp filter mode. If you uh, don't touch any buttons for about 10 seconds, it goes back to where it was. It uh, go leaves the mode and goes back into operational mode. Uh, so the mode button is how you change that. You hit the mute, it causes these to scroll, and then you use your mode button to um, go back and forth between your two digital filters. Uh, there's also a way to change your I squared S settings. It uh, changes the pin layout to match up with different equipment. I don't have anything with an I squared S output, so I haven't used that. But um, there is a video from Denifrips that shows you how to change the pin layout on your I squared S output on this. Anyway, um, I'll back, go back to my video now. I forgot to show you something when I was showing you the front of the deck here and the controls. If you look at the LED, the line across above the buttons here, if I zoom in, um, you can see the 44K light is on, and that's because I'm using a CD transport. As my input right now, which works at 46 kilohertz, and then the one times light is on showing that that's what my input is one times 44 kilohertz if i was at um if i was up at a higher input like 96 or 192 or whatever it is um either the 2k light would be or the two times light would be lit up or the four times light um, so basically this shows you what the resolution of your input coming into the DAC is or if you're using DSD your light would be lit up at the far end here. So <clears throat> I forgot to show you that the first time I wanted to come back and show you that um, this does tell you what your resolution, what your input is if you have high resolution files.
I almost forgot to give you a uh, close-up look at the back of this stack. At the far left, we start with your balanced input, your 3-pin XLRs. Then we go to your single-ended inputs, which would be uh, your RCA type plugs. And then down here, you've got your power input, your typical IEC uh, power plug, where you um, input your 120 volts AC. And then you've got your digital inputs, and we start with a coaxial, which is a uh, RCA tag plug, and then your second op or coaxial, which is a BNC type plug. Then you've got two AES inputs, which are um, your three pin XLR type. Then you've got your optical input your I squared S input and your USB input. So uh, this is a look at the back of the Pontus 2 from Denifrips. Getting back to my review, um, before I talk about the sound I wanted to um, mention what type of music I used listening to and reviewing this deck and it was my typical combination of different types of rock, some pop, some electronic, uh, a lot of acoustical music and uh, a lot of female vocals and um, a little bit of orchestral music thrown in. Um, my main source for this deck listening to it was a Cambridge Audio CD transport and um, the headphones that I used, uh, well, I'll start with the amps. I ran this deck into uh, four different amps to do my review. Uh, one was the Audio GD Master 9, which is a solid state amp. Next was the Wells Audio Dragon, which is a hybrid tube solid state amp. And then Two different amps from Waveborn. Um, one would be the Edelweiss 3 preamp and the other would be the power amp. Um, the, the one is a preamp plus a headphone amp and the other is a speaker amp plus a headphone amp, but they're both excellent headphone amps in my opinion. They're both all tube and uh, they use tubes in the input and output stage, the Edelweiss 3 is an OT or the preamp is an OTL type amp where the power amp is transformer coupled. Um, the headphones I used in reviewing this DAC would be the uh, ZMF Atrium which is ZMF's brand new headphone that just uh, came out and I believe uh, isn't even available till April 1st. The Kennerton Woden and the Kennerton um, Rogner, and that would be the planar version of it. That's Ken Kennerton's flagship closed headphone. And uh, the Hi-Fi Man Edition S XS and the Hi-Fi Man Aria Stealth. Um, so I threw a pretty good variety of headphones at this or at this deck during my review. Um, the decks that I compared the uh, Pontus 2 to would be the uh, Audio GD R8 Mark II, which is also an R2R type of deck. The Topping D90 SE, which is Topping's flagship deck, and um, that does sell for quite a bit less. It sells for $900, but it has measurement wise is as good or better than any deck on the market. Then um, the one step below that, the topping D70 MQA, or the D70S MQA version. And um, so um, getting into the sound, I guess um, describing the sound of this deck, I would use words like warm, smooth, um, liquid, rich, almost lush, um, but at the same time it has exceptional detail and resolution, is good or better than any other deck that I've heard up to this point. I mean it lacks absolutely nothing in detail even though it's got that warm sort of um, you know just a rich liquid sound to it without being 
analytical. It never sounds dry. It never sounds thin. It's got good body to it. Um, I mean, to be honest, it's just a beautiful sounding deck. So, um, anyway, um, and then the other thing about this deck, it has the, it has a very wide and probably, no, I shouldn't say probably, it has the deepest, most three-dimensional, and um, I just saw a discussion about this other day, about how the word holographic is overused, but I don't know another way to say it. I mean, the the soundstage just, it, it's deep and it has multiple layers to it, more so than any other deck that I've heard so far to this date. Um, so I wanted to um, spend a couple minutes comparing this to some other decks just to let you know what you can expect from the sound if you've heard some of these other decks. And I'm going to start with the Topping D90, okay? Th this would be the D90 SE actually. Um, the D90, like I said, it has exceptional measurements and it sounds exactly the way you would expect a piece of equipment to sound with exceptional measurements. It's crystal clear, it has exceptional detail and resolution, but in my opinion it sounds sort of dry and sort of analytical. It lacks musicality, it lacks um, the warmth and um, richness that I really like, and comparing that to this deck the Pontus II has, in my opinion, every bit of the detail and resolution of the D90SE, but with a much richer, much more um, liquid, non-analytical sound. To me, it's just, it has better musicality and it just is more enjoyable to listen to. It gives the music more weight and more body. So. Every bit of the detail and clarity of the D90 SE, but with a warmer, richer sound. Uh, comparing this to the uh, D70, the D70 really blows me away. Uh, this would be the D D70 SMQA version. To me, in my opinion, it sounds very similar to both of the R2R decks I have. It just has an R2R sound. I actually like it a lot better than the D90 SE. The D70 has a rich liquid sound to it, non-analytical, and but yet to me it has very close to the same amount of detail and resolution as the D90. And the D70 doesn't sound like any other um, Delta Sigma chip deck that I've heard. It sounds very much like the Pontus II and the um, Audio GD R8 Mark II. Okay, so I did compare the D70 directly to the Pontus II, and I've got to tell you that the D70 only sells for $650. Although I'm not sure if it's still available. Um, I, from what I've seen, it's on back order or not available lately. So anyway, um, comparing the two, the, they sound very similar. They have a very similar tone, tone balance and a very similar warmth. The only difference I really hear is um, the... Pontus II does edge out the D70 a little bit in clarity and a little bit in detail, and it edges out the D70S um, as far as depth to the sound stage. They're, they both have very wide sound stages, but the Pontus does have more depth, more layering, and a more three-dimensional sound to it than the D70. But, you know... Um, the D70, to be honest, probably takes you like 90% of the way to the Pontus for about a third the price. But if you want to go that extra 10%, the Pontus is on another level. And I mean, 
This is all about the law of diminishing returns with audio equipment. The normal standard or you know what most people believe with audio equipment is basically you've got to pay twice the price for about a 10% improvement and it works that way on up the line and that's kind of the case here. Um, actually it's three times the price. The, the Pontus II is on another level above the D70. They sound very similar but it is without a doubt better. You know I'm not going to try to tell you you're getting the same deck or the same sound with the D70. The D70 is a great deck, outstanding for its price, but the Pontus is a step above. It's another step up from the D70. Uh, comparing this to the uh, Audio GD R8 Mark II, um, once again they have a very similar sound. What I wanted to point out though, and I just discovered this uh, a few days ago, Excuse me for just a second. It's very dry in my house. Um, even though it's late March, I'm still heating with wood. It's been pretty cold out and it really dries out the air in my house. And When I sit here and uh, ramble on and on, <laughs> my mouth and throat get dried out. So uh, forgive me for having to stop and take a drink. But anyway, um, the R8 Mark II I had first and I've already done my first impressions and my uh, full review of it. When I received the R8 um, it has four different oversampling modes. It has, um, well you have a choice of zero oversampling, no oversampling, or two times, four times, or eight times. And I toggled through them and I did hear a little bit of difference in the sound, but I couldn't really decide what I liked best. So I actually, um, I put it up to the four times over sampling and left it there for a long time. Anyway, um, I compared this deck, the Pontus II, to the R8. And the Pontus I was using, the XLR outputs into my Audio GD. <clears throat> excuse me, my Audio GD Master 9, and I was using the uh, ACSS outputs of the um, R8 into the Master 9, and I reviewed it that, or compared the two that way, and then I compared the two using the RCA outputs out of both into the um, Waveborn Edelweiss um, Power Amp Plus. So anyway, I compared the two and as much as I like the Audio GD Master 9, and keep in mind that I was still in the eight times over sampling, I compared the two and I had to say that the Pontus was edging out the, the um, R8 in several ways. They were very small differences. There was no large difference. The two sound very similar. But after extensive comparing back and forth, I decided that the uh, Pontus was edging out the R8 slightly in clarity and detail. And I'm talking a very small amount, just a couple percentage. I mean, I had to do a lot of comparing back and forth and using very good headphones like, you know, the Kennerton Rogner. Anyway, but the R8 seemed to edge out the, or I mean the Pontus, seemed to edge out the R8 just slightly in clarity and detail, and slightly in um, soundstage depth and um, the three-dimensionality, the layers. It seemed that like it was just slightly better and the Pontus seemed to be also just slightly more focused. Um, just I just got a little bit clearer picture of everything. And at that point, I was saying that the Pontus is just slightly, but it is better than the MK2 or the R8 MK2. Okay, but just a couple days ago, I decided when comparing them, to mess with the oversampling on the R8 
and I put the R8 down to no oversampling and I compared them once again and I realized that I actually prefer the no oversampling mode on the R8. It actually put them back very very close where for probably a couple hours I couldn't have told the difference in a blind test and no I did not actually set up a blind test but going back and forth and listening to the two, they were a lot closer now. They were very close in detail and clarity, and um, they actually got closer in the three-dimensional sound stage to the point it was very hard for me to tell the, tr the difference. But um, once again, at the end, I decided that the Pontus II slightly edged out, but closer this time. And I'm talking just a couple of percent, but it did slightly edge out the R8 and, um, and it, in clarity and detail just seemed slightly more focused, just a little bit more texture in female vocals where I just felt like I was hearing a little more detail in their voice and um, just a slightly deeper, more layered sound stage. But like I said, the differences were very small. And if you have a Audio GD R8 MK2, um, switching to the Pontus would be more of a sideways step than a step up. The difference is very small. And unless you have money to throw away, if you've already got the Audio GD, no. I mean, I could live with the Audio GD the rest of my life. Um, yes, I slightly prefer the Pontus sound, um, but it's not a large difference at all. Okay, um, comparing the two also, I have to say that the Pontus instead of three buttons on the front it's got six and it's less complicated to do things with it it's just because the audio gd even though some of the buttons on this have more than one function the audio gd got three buttons and they perform multiple functions and it's kind of confusing i've had a hard time with it where this is more simple uh this one's smaller it's about the same weight actually I actually think this, I really like the looks of the Pontus and um, so I'm just going to come out and say not by a long shot but by a narrow margin I prefer this to the Audio GD and like I said it's very narrow margin in a lot of small ways. There's no big difference but a lot of little things adds up to if I had a choice of one or the other I would take the Pontus um, it's just an outstanding sounding DAC it looks great it's very easy to use to go through the functions I did want to mention that I tried the two different um, the two different digital filters and I didn't really hear a difference but I will admit because of my age I probably can't hear above 15,000 Hertz in most digital filters affect the roll off from about 18,000 hertz and up so most with most uh, DACs I don't hear if I do hear a difference it's a very small difference that I hear between the digital filters I switch back and forth between the two the slow roll off and the sharp roll off and I, I heard a slight difference not a major and I settled in on the sharp roll off I think I actually preferred that one um, and then the oversampling, um, no oversampling mode on this. I most of the time I was actually at the no oversampling mode. Um, I think I preferred it better. It just, um, I think it had a more slightly more natural sound and a little bit warmer, and um, in fact a little more detailed. So that would be this deck and the. Um, the Audio GD that I preferred both of them in the non oversampling mode. So, anyway, uh, what it comes down to is this DAC is not cheap at $1,800, but it is the best DAC I have ever heard up to this point. 
and yes I highly recommend it um, and yeah you know you have to get into some good headphones before you can really tell the difference between these different decks but um, you know if you're running you know a $300 $500 pair of headphones Getting into a DAC like this, there's probably not a point to it. It's probably necessary, but when you start getting into the higher end headphones, I actually think that the DAC can make a large or larger difference than the amp. It really can, you know, make a lot of difference in the sound. But I mean, for but I'm going to say the same thing I've always said. You pick your headphone first. You find the headphone you like, you can uh, sometimes make significant changes in the same headphone using different ear pads. That's going to be a bigger difference than anything else you can do. Then you find the amp you want, then you find the DAC you want, and then last you start messing with cables, things like that, you know, but you got to do things in order. If you don't like the way your headphone sounds, changing a cable is not going to make a significant difference. So. And that's going to um, aggravate some people. Some people aren't going to like that statement. Some people would tell me that changing a cable on a headphone can make a night and day difference. I'm sorry. I just, I don't buy it, but maybe they hear something I don't hear. Maybe they have better ears than I do. Better hearing. Um, I think the way I see it, I have kind of average hearing that I hear things that you know most people hear and I don't hear things that most people don't hear you know there's some people out there that might have exceptional hearing that hear things I don't hear but you know I'm here for the average guy not the person with you know super outstanding hearing that you know can you know hear things up above the you know 20,000 hertz that sort of thing but anyway um, I'm rambling on. I'm going to cut this video short. Um, once again, this is William from the Headphone Experience. If this video has helped you, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. And you are all welcome to join us at the Headphone Experience on Facebook. We're at um, over 20, no, over 15.7 thousand members. So I hope to see you over there. Once again, thanks for watching my video.